Okay, we did it. We're finally at the last video for Supernatural Season 7. I know that I've been quite complaining throughout this whole season, and thank you guys for sticking around. I really do appreciate that, because it's just been a whopper. I have not enjoyed going through this season that much. There are some decent episodes throughout it. However, I really feel that the miscellaneous really good episodes uh, were few, even fewer and further between than they were in season six. Season six has some bangers. Like the French Mistake is probably one of the best episodes of Supernatural in its history. Yet I can't even say any of the ones in this season could reach into the top 10. Not top 20, maybe not even top 30. But regardless, here are the top five best episodes I believe that take place in Supernatural season seven. There's no honorable mentions, there's just not enough to even warrant that. Starting with number five, it's fun to see Dean go back in time and hang out with Elliot Ness. Time After Time is another kind of French Mistake episode in the terms of just going to an alternate reality being the past. Dean teaming up with Elliot Ness to take on this weird trans-dimensional demon thing. It's a good filler episode. There's not really anything in terms of story, like they try to make it that the thing at the end says i see all black goo but it doesn't matter the vibe of this episode is fun it got a little bit of that gentleman like the kingsman sort of esque vibe to it i think that dean and the guy who plays elliot ness have good banter back and forth and i even like the kind of the frequency-esque sort of idea of Dean be able to communicate with Sam in the future. Really funny comparison considering that Jeremy Carver, who would be the showrunner for the next three seasons, would go on to make his own shitty version of a television show called Frequency based off of that movie. Probably the best rando episode in this entire season. That's not saying much to me, but I still think it is warranted of that. Number four is Party on Garth. Not only do you have one of the quintessential Garth episodes of the whole show, you also have them taking on a demon, Japanese demon, that they can only fight while being drunk. Every bit about this episode is funny, every bit about this episode is good, I enjoy Garth's inclusion in this episode. He absolutely makes that entire concept that he grows on you, even if you don't like him at first, he becomes lovable by the end, and also like sock puppet Garth can't beat that, absolutely. Everything about this episode is probably the best in terms of the humor, the monster of the week ideology of the show is a solid, solid episode. Number three, I almost feel is one of the best story related episodes of this season. And that is Meet the New Boss. We pick up right after the conclusion of season six. And I actually think that Jay the Zoomster had a good comment about, you kind of wish that this was the season finale of six but I actually enjoy it as an opener only because it gave me the illusion the season was going to be so much better than it actually was. Castiel is ruthless and by near on evil in terms of his ideology of himself and this belief that he is now the new god and handing out punishment and judgment on those who he deems worthy of it. Even though he's got a monster inside himself that is, is fighting to break out, and eventually ends with him exploding. But before that, there's this tyrannical reign of terror that he has, including even basically calling the boys pets. I like how this season started. It is a shame that it never kept this flavor, it never kept this intensity, it never kept this style. It's also one of the few scary episodes of the season, and that's due to some fantastic prosthetic work on Castiel between his stomach almost exploding as well as the gore and everything on his face. Meet the New Boss is actually a really good season opener, far better than season six, and it's up there with being one of the better openers of any season. So that's why I can say Meet the New Boss is where it is. Now, number two is, in my opinion, my favorite episode of this season, but it's not the best one. But number two is the girl with the Dungeons and Dragons tattoo. This is probably the best story related episode. We get to meet Charlie who is fantastically played by Felicia Day and she has this great inclusion into the show with her humor, her wit, and the puns that she gets. And she also has some interactions with Dick Roman which are some of my favorite from the show. Everything about this episode builds stakes. It has tension, it has humor, it has story relevancy. If only 
a majority more of the episodes of this season could have been like this one in caliber, maybe the season wouldn't be dog shit as it is. Unfortunately, episodes like this were very, very few, to the point where it's literally the only episode I gave a 6 to throughout this season. Be that as it may, it is still very, very much deserving of the number 2 spot. And then number 1, I don't think anyone had this in doubt. Personally, it's not my favorite episode of the season, mainly because they do kind of not fully pull the trigger, literally, on what they have happened in this episode, but it is still very much deserving of the number one spot, and that is obviously Death's Door. Having Bobby very, very slowly die, but go through his own, basically, the last moments of his life, the perfect moments, the, seeing the heaven's light, and going through all of these things to try and give the boys one last message before he dies was so heartbreaking. The whole time you were rooting for him, you hoped, you prayed, you wanted him to survive. All the while, the story element was Sam and Dean in the hospital, trying to be threatened by Dick Roman, but Dean just being so mad about the entire situation that he's willing to fight him in the open. And just the whole spiritual journey that Bobby goes on. We get so much backstory that has been alluded to about Bobby throughout this whole thing, from his father, to his mother, to his wife, to his relationship with Rufus. It's so perfect. Personally, I find this kind of funny because this is the second number one Bobby episode that I've ever given a number one spot to. Obviously with season six being Weekend at Bobby's being my number one of that season. But Death's Door, without having the flavor kind of distilled by him not dying, but then even being brought back as a ghost, which worked for the most part, and then they killed him again. I think that this was a fantastic send off if kind of on temporal hold for one of the most beloved characters in this show. And even though they would still find a way to bring Bobby Singer back in strange but very convenient locations and story elements, this episode still hit so hard. And if there was any episode that you needed to watch of season 7, this would be the one. This is the one that matters the most. And that is why it is number one. Oh fucking K. That's it guys. We're done. We are finished with season seven thank you all so much for sticking around through my negative ass going through this i am excited to go through season eight considering the church where a majority of the opener takes place is actually literally a five minute walk away from where i am right now and i'm definitely going to show it off when i do the review but before we talk more about that let's see what you guys thought were your number one episodes of the season death store is my second favorite episode in the season and favorite mid-season finale in the entire show because it gave a great tribute to bobby singer i also love how it brings the winchesters to the lowest point of the season that they have nobody but each other to defeat the leviathan yes they have jody but she wasn't a focus to aiding them against the leviathans and frank was only helping them because he was getting paid well also jody just disappears right I have to say, out of all the characters of the show, just on a side tangent here, the fact that Jody stuck through the entire show, despite only appearing like once or twice a season, is pretty impressive. In a group that are obvious ones like the introductions of cool characters or the send-off of Bobby, a few honorable mentions I liked, I had to decide on, but I'll speak on one being my favorite for the season is Repo Men. They did such a, so much right in this episode that it honestly surprised me on first watch. The story is interesting and dark, demons actually have a scary vibe to them, Lucifer isn't just being annoying but helping Sam. This is what, what more of a Monster of the Week episode should have been. I actually do like season... I. I do like elements of Repo Men, but the problem was the further you looked into it, the more the episode's logic broke. But I really like Sam and Lucifer hallucination teaming up to take on the element. I did like that. And I also like the idea of PTSD, traumatic uh, kind of relationship with being possessed by a demon. I just think the episode should have maybe gone through a few more runs through the machine just to like kind of get away from the little nooks and crannies of issues that it had but yeah it is a good concept just not as well executed as i would have liked number one episode for the season is girl with the dragon tattoo well i guess it's obvious why this one is my fave because it introduces charlie who is the best female character on this show well until they brought her back as au charlie who had a personality of sandpaper <laughs> 
Honestly, same. It, it is my favorite episode of the season. It's not the best one like, in terms of like story, like just in terms of quality, but I think that Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is also, or sorry, Girl with the Dungeons and Dragon Tattoo is my favorite one of this season. And yeah, I like your note about good luck with season eight when you get around to it. The first half is boring. Thanks. I'm, I'm so, so enthused. <laughs> Took me a while to pick some of my best episodes for season seven because the season was such a slog. Definitely uh, can compare to rewatching season four of Buffy and book eight of Wheel of Time. Uh, I've actually never read the book of time, but Wheel of Time books, but I had a friend in high school who thought it was really cool. But your number one is Death's Door. This episode is really great to me. It was interesting knowing so much more about Bobby's life, from his childhood to his life as a father figure to Sam and Dean and his friendship with Rufus. This episode is a beautiful but sad send off for Bobby to me. I think that's, yeah, that is probably why this episode stands so high is because of the elements that you see Bobby's past. We see all of these things that we never had answers to. We only had kind of allusions and sort of mentions here and there too. So that was cool to see. I will always say that episode one of season seven was the best. God cast was awesome but short-lived. Actually, to be honest, the fact that Castiel, Misha Collins, got sick, or no, he had a kid and that's why he just disappeared for a large portion of the season. I kind of wanted to see him take a longer to become you know, explosion of Leviathan. I was kind of hoping that would take a little bit more time. But yeah, no, the, the opening's so good. If only completely lets you down, like it sets you up for disappointment for the rest of the season. Uh, Pillow Boys number one here is Death Store, one of the best send-offs for a beloved character. Absolutely, absolutely would agree. All right, thank you guys so much for your comments. I really appreciate that. Thank you for all of your comments and remarks throughout this entire season run. We are officially on the last three seasons that I have not reviewed in full. 99 episodes left. No, that's not math. 69 nice. episodes left, guys. That is how many we have left to review of Supernatural. That's kind of bonkers. I had the intention of going from one to five. I had the hope of doing six to ten but I didn't know if it would be a thing, and this season really fucking tested me. Trust me, it's not over yet. I actually full-on stopped watching the show through season 10. I actually had to get someone to download the episode so I could catch up with where things were. Season 10, funnily enough, being the last season that I have to review will probably be the last hurdle. But regardless, before I start reviewing season 8, I do want to take a break. I want to have some Thursdays to myself. Also, we are about to run into the beginning of wedding season for me. It's gonna be super busy for me. I'm going to be here, but I'm not gonna be able to work on almost anything except for my work. I'm gonna try and review an episode here and there and then start building the plethora. I wanna try and avoid the laziness that I did during this season. And I apologize to those who saw that, that laziness. It just was very difficult to wanna to motivate myself to get through this season, guys. I just didn't want to. I didn't wanna keep going. I didn't wanna watch it. I didn't wanna have any part of it especially in the midpoint but hey got through it i started reviewing this just before i went to england and now we are done i think i might do a video talking about just my overall thoughts the sarah gamble era it's, i don't really think it's going to be an edited one it's more so just a uh, kind of a state of mind of rambling state of consciousness about the whole thing it's a very kind of dark episode of the supernatural saga and it was really unfortunate but it did show that sometimes even when you're a great writer under good hierarchy you cannot be good hierarchy yourself and that's not a jab at sarah she did a good job with what she had when she was one of the staff writers but just some people can't run something and i would not have wanted to be her like can you imagine the fucking mountain that you had in front of you. Hey, we just finished the show on basically a perfect episode, but instead we're going to continue on. It's definitely like whoever was the main showrunner for Scrub Season 9. Because after the absolute GOAT episode that is the original series finale, can you imagine being the guy who had to bring back the show that very, very clearly ended? And that season's shit. I never even finished it. I got halfway through and I couldn't. So at least with Sarah, you were able to get something to at least finish her first season even if you had to like basically 
claw your eyes out getting through her sophomore season. So anyways guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed these videos. I hope you enjoyed this adventure. I really hope you continue along with me when we get into season eight. I'm gonna just take a shot in the dark, maybe September, maybe October. I know that's a ways, maybe it might start earlier. It depends on my process and how far I get and just where I wanna start. I, I just wanna break. I hope that when I do return to this, you return with me because I really enjoy your comments. I really enjoy the discussions either with you personally or seeing you interact with each other. I always like that. That's enough rambling from me. Thank you all again. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you guys when we start Season 8. Eventually. <laughs>